uh, welcome friends to this live stream of node chairs on express so in this tutorial we will basically be looking at how to implement form validation inside your node chairs express application so we will basically take a very simple html form right here and as you will see we will use a schema validation library called as joi which is basically a very popular node chairs package which allows you to do this validation on the server side so for this we will be using node.js and express so you will see that basically we will have three fields out there name email and uh, password so if i don't write anything you will see the validations error will be returned from the server side that name is not allowed to be empty because we have set this inside our server code you will see basically we have set these validation rules that the name is required so that's why it is returning me that message that name must be written you can see now if i write the name here and if i just just see this to be empty here email and password to be empty then it will say email is not allowed to be empty so i also need to write the email address as well and then if I just write the name here and if I left the password field empty you will see password is not allowed to be empty so this is coming this using this required syntax guys required method so this makes it a required field so that's why you are seeing these validation errors returning from the server side so now let's suppose I write all the three entries out there successfully then if I click submit the form will submit and you will see password length must be at least eight characters long. This is coming because of this rule that is minimum characters should be eight characters. So this is coming due to this. So now I need to change write at least uh, the characters that we have eight characters in the password and if i meet all the characters you will see forms submitted successfully so in this case guys you can validate the user data which is submitted by these simple schema validators using joi let me show you the package which i am using joi it's a most powerful schema description language validator for javascript you can even use it inside the browser itself or you can basically uh, use it inside your express server totally depends upon you how you want to use it you can see it's having 6,727 weekly downloads uh, and it's a very simple library and the command is very simple npm i j o i all the source code example guys is given in the description of the video i have written a complete blog post on my tutorial website where you can find out all the blog post code that i am using in this video so just go to the description of this video so now let's get started guys by building this application i will show you all the validators out there so right inside our application here we need to first of all make a simple express app so what we just need to basically first of all require it at the very top and then we just need to simply require this validation library which is called as joi and then we just need to make a new express app guys here and after this we will start this express application on port 5000 and here we can inside callback function we will say app is listening on port 5000 so after this guys what we need to do is that we need to basically uh, set the public directory as static so we need to set this public directory guys so right here you just need to create a public directory here just create public directory and here you will be storing our form which will be a simple index.html form and uh, after you set this as uh, static guys now you can basically open if you open the home page home route you can simply now access this index.html which is stored here response.send file and here you can directly load 
index.html so it will directly go to public and it will load this file and now inside this file guys we will basically be having a simple form so this form will make a simple uh, action will be going to slash submit and this will be a simple post request and now guys this action this form will contain three fields out there first field will be for entering basically the username here so we can give a name attribute here of name and that's all so here basically we are not putting required all this validation will take place on the server side input type email and we can even change this to text here so we just need to check at the server side whether it's a valid email or not we will give it a name property which is email but it's not recommended that you disable javascript and only do server side validation it is almost a good practice you also enable the client side validation as well because for some reason if server side validation doesn't uh, take place then it will be havoc for your application so uh, so similarly we will have for the password as well input type password and name will be password that's all and then guys we will have basically the submit button so once you click the submit button register your form submits so now what will happen if I start this application so it will start at localhost 5000 if I go to this port number you will see my form here guys and why it is pre-filling it let me, let me just say here go to settings here and inside extensions let me just remove this extension which is true key let me just disable it so that it doesn't pre-fill all this stuff let me just say auto complete to off I don't know why it is pre-filling it guys so now we have a simple form guys so now if we click the register button you cannot post submit we need to make this post request so inside index.js guys right here we will make this post request so slash submit and uh, re request response so here all your data which will be coming when you submit this form coming so right here we just need to set some middleware functions we need to say here uh, express.json this will be required whenever you are working with forms and also express.url encoded extended to false so this is needed guys this is uh, body parser middleware working in the background you just need to do this so to get the values so now one by one we will get all the values which the user has submitted like request.body followed by the name parameter that you have given so name and then we will get the email request.body.email and then we will get the password as well so we will get all these three entries that we, the user has submitted we can console log them just to check so if you check now your console guys after you submit your form so what will happen here you will see basically if I say if I submit click register so what you will see all these in, is printed in the console the name the email address and this is basically your password and now what we need to make sure if you click register you need to validate this data on the server side so how to validate this it's very simple uh, what we are doing right here we just need to inside or this post request after we get all this data uh, we basically need to make a schema object schema and for this we will require this library form validation joi library and basically it contains a object method guys and inside this object we can pass these three values the name and basically it contains some validators so it needs to say the name will be a string and 
it must be required so there is very much you will see required is there this is basically the validator so it makes the thing required so the user must fill out this thing if it doesn't fill out then there should be an error form validation error similarly for email address as well guys so we will simply say this will also be a string but in this case this as but this is the email field it needs to be a valid email so for validating the email we have the email validator like this so it requires the string value to be a valid email address like this and again it should be required so you can see we are chaining all the validators that we are defining so these are the valid it, it uh, email must be a string it must be a valid email and it is required all that stuff this is the chain that you see it is required it must be a valid email and it must be a string and then lastly for the password we have again we will have basically this method here the password must be a string here and then we have the validator is minimum characters of password should be 8 which is entered by the user and again at last the password is required field that's all so what these three lines of code is done guys is basically done the form validation part so if for some reason your client side validation is not done then this will make sure that server side validation has been done of the user data and now we can simply extract the error so if the rules are not met then this error will take place so this schema contains this validate method and basically here you can pass your request or body data like this so after you do this guys it's very after after we have defined this data here we are directly passing the request body so this will basically pass all these three parameters name email and password directly to this schema so we will match the schema and we will match the data if any sort of error take place we will return this data here and right here we will basically have a if condition that if the error does contain in that case we will display the error so we will display the error details so error contains a method details and basically for displaying the error message we will use this snippet of code which will be we will be basically be use that form validation has been done successfully like this form submitted successfully so close the h2 tag like this so basically this is a very basic example guys now we can test this example in the browsers if it is working or not if i reload this application what should happen let me restart this application so basically if i write the name and if i don't write these two fields you will see validation error will be returned to me that email is not allowed to be empty and if i entered the email address as well and if it is not a valid email if i entered the password email must be a valid email so you will see all these validation messages are return, returning to us if i entered a valid email but if i don't enter the password password is not allowed to be empty if i enter the password if i don't enter the name name is not allowed to be empty so and also guys we can also attach this minimum character which is eight characters of password let's suppose if i write only four characters of password so now you will see password length must be at least eight characters long so you will see all these validation error messages are returning to us so this library makes it very much easy so you define these rules at one place and uh, this will return out the messages automatically to the end user and you can check out the documentation of this library it's a pretty large library it contains a lot of schema validators which are pre-built for you so you don't need to reinvent the wheel so automatically all the data types are co covered here so if you're working with numbers if you're taking a date, date input any sort of input that you are taking inside your application you can basically use this library 
So instead of minimum characters, you can also have max characters schema validator. So this means that your password at most will be having eight characters. You can't be having more than eight characters. So if I refresh this application here, you will see if I try to enter uh, larger than eight characters, then I will basically get an error like this. You will see that your password let me just refresh this. So if I just refresh now this application here. So if I enter the password greater than eight characters, so you will see password length must be less than or equal to eight characters long. So, so in my blog post guys, I have given the examples of each schema validator in detail. So you can check this blog post as well. The link is given in the description of the live stream. So, this was a tutorial so thank you very much for watching this stream and I will be seeing you in the next one.